Hello everyone, welcome back to Editor. So in today's session, we are going to discuss a very important finance news article that is regarding the Reserve Bank of India that has revised the regulatory framework of the UCBs, of the Urban Cooperative Banks. So what is the revision that has been done on the regulatory framework and the RBI stipulates four-tier regulatory structure for the Urban Cooperative Banks, this also we will see. So we will see the, all the important revisions that has been done for the regulatory framework for the Urban Cooperative Banks by the RBI. So now before starting with the session, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are new to the channel and join our Telegram channel for the PDF of this session and you can get the link of the Telegram channel in the description box below. So now starting with the news article that is the revised regulatory framework has been presented for the urban cooperative banks. So how the revision was made? Was made. So first of all the Reserve Bank of India had constituted the expert committee on the urban cooperative banks in Feb 2021. Okay, so this committee had to present the recommendations and this committee was under the chairmanship of Sri N.S. Vishwanathan, the former deputy governor of the Reserve Bank. So this was the committee that was formed in 2021 Feb and the chairperson was or chairmanship was under Sri N.S. Vishwanathan, remember this name, okay. So now this committee had to give recommendations on these things that to examine the issues in UCB sector, urban cooperative sector that what are the uh, issues in front of them to provide a medium term roadmap that how uh, the uh, growth can be done in the UCBs. Thus, to suggest measures for faster rehabilitation and the resolution of UCBs. That how we can, uh, if the UCB is going down, if the UCB is not working well, how we can uh, make it to grow or how we can resolute it. So, there should be faster measures to do this, to uh, make the UCB go again on the growth path, to rehabilitate it, uh, so that it can come out of the uh, problems or issues that it is in. Or at last, if we want to end the UCB, if you want to resolute the UCB, that what can be the faster measure for that. To recommend suitable regulatory supervisory changes that can strengthen the sector, that can strengthen the UCB urban cooperative banks by leveraging the recent amendments that has happened on the Banking Regulations Act 1949 as per, uh, as per the regulations that is applicable on the uh, urban cooperative banks on the cooperative banks okay so how to strengthen the ucbs the uh, crux of this is that the ucbs how to resolve the issues of the ucb that can happen only after examining the issues that is going on with the ucbs to show them a medium term roadmap that you have to go in this way this is the path for the growth okay to uh, see the measure that how we can rehabilitate or resolute the ucbs in a faster ma manner as well as the regulatory and supervisory measures that can be brought for the better working of the UCBs. So the report submitted by the expert committee, this was presented uh, in front of the RBI in August 2022. After that, this report was sent, it was kept in the RBI website so that the stakeholders, so that the public can comment on that. Okay, the members of the public can comment on the report. So the report submitted by the expert committee was placed on the RBI's website. After that, the comments were asked on this report. The recommendations of the committee have since been examined for implementation duly factoring the feedback that the RBI has got, uh, RBI has received from the stakeholders and the members of the public. Okay, so from that time only it was seen that which recommendations are good, which recommendations we can implement in a faster manner. So those uh, recommendations were seen and the feedback were also, um, the RBI was also getting the feedback from the public, from the stakeholders. And in July, in July 19, the uh, notification was out regarding the revised regulatory framework for the urban cooperative banks. Okay. So now we will see that what are the major recommendations which have been accepted are as follows. So the first major recommendation that has been accepted was regarding the four tier regulatory framework. Okay, it should be a simple four tier regulatory system, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 and tier 4. 
and with differentiated regulatory prescriptions aimed at strengthening the financial soundness of the existing UCBs. So we have to divide the UCBs into four tier. Why? So that the RBI can look after each and every tier in a different manner, in a different uh, way. Okay, the regulatory prescriptions have to be have uh, different for the small entities. It has to be different for the big entities. The big entities need more look after because the RBI has to take strong measures if the big entity is going down. Okay. Okay. So that's why they have been divided tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 and tier 4. You can see that tier 4 is the biggest of the UCBs that are there. Okay. So the regulatory prescriptions will be different for these uh, different tiers. So salary earners, uh, so starting with tier 1, tier 1 is all the unit UCBs, all the unit urban cooperative banks unit means that have a single branch in a district. And salary earners UCBs. Okay, salary earner UCBs, you can see that salary earner banks or the UCBs are essentially thrift societies that are saving the money that is set by the employees of the governmental departments or the large PSUs, large establishments for the mutual help on the principles of cooperation. Just the salary earners are coming together and they are um, trying to save the money. Okay, so that is salary earners UCBs. Irrespective of their deposit size, they will come in the tier 1. See, urban cooperative banks. Cooperative banks are which banks? Cooperative banks are the banks. Cooperative means that the members, that the people are coming together and they are trying to save. So they are the members as well as they are the owners also. As well as the, it is cooperative banks. Okay. So the banks usually take the deposits from the non-members also. But mostly what happens in a cooperative bank that the members are also the owners. Okay. Otherwise the non-members can also deposit in a cooperative bank. So all here salary owners are the ones that are coming together and that are becoming the members that are becoming the owners. They are helping each other by saving the money and uh, giving the loans to the ones that need it. Okay. So and all the other UCBs having deposits up to 100 crore. So uh, the all unit UCBs and the salary owners UCBs they will come in tier 1 irrespective of the deposit size. Other UCBs that have the deposit of up to 100 crore. So it is the tiers have been uh, made as per the deposit size. Okay. So up to 100 crore will come in tier 1 uh, from up. tier 2 will consist of UCBs that have more than 100 crore uh, deposits up to rupees 1000 crores of deposits. Tier 3 will consist of UCBs that have the deposits more than 1000 crore or up and up to uh, the uh, 10,000 crores. Okay, deposits of 10,000 crores. Tier 4 will consist of the UCBs that have the deposits of more than 10,000 crores. So you can understand that tier 4 is the is cons uh, tier 4 consists of the UCBs that have the most of the deposits uh, that the public is depositing. It is the big banks, okay, they are the big entrepreneur cooperative banks that have the deposits from the public, that have huge deposits of the public and if they go down, it will be a big trouble and that's why different regulatory prescriptions is needed by the RBI for different tiers. Of course, for the higher tiers, more prescriptions, more regulations will be needed, more supervision will be needed for, from the RBI and that's why this division has been made okay so now coming to the second recommendation that is given by the Reserve Bank of India that is regarding the minimum net worth so minimum net worth will be of 2 crore for the tier 1 UCBs that is operating in the single district only but if the tier 1 UCBs are operating in different districts that they have to have rupees 5 crore as well as all the other tiers will have to have the minimum net worth of the rupees 5 crore okay for all the tiers, for all the other tiers, this is expected to strengthen the financial resilience. Okay, if they have a better base, if they have a better base, then they can grow better, of course. So that's why for the base, they should have the minimum net worth of at least 5 crores for the big tiers. Okay. So this is to enhance their ability to fund their growth. How much capital they have, that depends uh, on that. It depends that how they will grow further. So if they have the net worth of 5 crore, that will be better able to grow them. Okay. So for tier 2, tier 3 and tier 4 UCBs, while retaining the current capital adequacy framework, it has been decided to revise. So current uh, capital adequacy is minimum 9% should be there. Okay. Uh, the, for the current, the current capital adequacy is to have the 9% of the capital. Okay. But now it has been revised that the minimum CRAR, the minimum capital uh, to asset ratio. Okay. That should be 12%. 
so as to strengthen their capital structure. So the CRAR requirement or the capital adequacy or requirement has been raised from 9% to 12% before you needed 9% as the capital adequacy but now you need the tier 1, tier 2 and the tier 4 UCBs will need 12% of the CRAR. Okay, uh, capital that is capital to risk weighted asset ratio. Okay. So what is this? I have explained it a lot of times to you that uh, uh, the loans that the banks are giving, the loans that the banks are giving, it has some risk attached to it. The higher the risk, uh, so the higher weightage of the risk will be there. So that's why you have to see that the capital and the asset, loans are what? Loans are the asset. So you have to see the asset of the banks. So you have to see that how much asset is there, what is the risk involved with that. As per that, you have to keep some capital with you. So if this loan will not come back, at least you will have the backup capital to give to the depositors. I have explained this concept, CRAR, the capital to risk weighted asset ratio a lot of times. I don't think we have to go it again. Uh, but it is just that the assets are there, uh, that are the loans that the banks are giving, that are the assets of the banks and the banks have to keep a capital with them uh, that is uh, the described 12% now, that is revised to 12% now, okay. So as per the data reported by the banks as in March 2021, most of the UCBs have the CRAR more than 12%. So it is like out of 1534 UCBs, already 1274 UCBs are keeping 12% of the um, CRR though the minimum requirement was 9% still for the safety they were keeping 12% of the CRR okay further the banks that do not meet the revised CRR will be provided a glide path of, glide path of 3 years so they will get 3 years to reach from 9% to 12% okay so on the first year that is the glide path the uh, path will start to go to the 12% it will start from 2024 so on March 2024, they have to have the uh, CRAR, minimum CRAR of 10%. In the March 2025, they have to have the minimum CRAR of 11%. By the March 2026, they have to have the minimum uh, CRAR of 12%. So by 2026, they have to reach to the 12% uh, criteria. Okay. Accordingly, these banks will have to achieve a CRAR of 10% by the financial year ended March 31st, 2024, 11% by March 2025 and 12% by March 2026. So this is the glide path. This is the path that is broken down for the uh, UCBs that do not have the CRAR of the 10, 12% of the uh, minimum CRAR of the 12%. Okay. For them, it is a path that will lead them to the 12% of the CRAR. So a path has been given to them. You cannot force them to have the CRAR raised in a, a month, in a year. So that's why the RBI has given a glide path, a slowdown, a slowed path that they can reach to 12% easily. So the next recommendation that is given by the RBI is regarding in order to boost growth opportunities in the sector, it has been decided to introduce automatic route for branch expansion uh, to the UCBs which meet the revised FSWM that is financially sound and well managed criteria. If a UCB is financially sound, it is doing very good in the financial terms, it is uh, getting, it has less NPA and it has good CRR. So the branch expansion should be available through the automatic route uh, for the that kind of UCBs. Automatic route means that it should not have the uh, to go through the so much documentation to start the branch okay to go to RBI for the permission to go to different departments for the permission or something. So the UCBs will have the automatic route for the branch expansion for the UCBs that are financially sound and well managed. So financially sound and well managed bank UCBs are which that have the CRAR of not less than 10%. So minimum is was 9% but 10% is like you who should have 10% so that is financially sound and well managed. Gross NPA of less than 7% NPA is non-performing asset. So the loans are the assets, the loans are the assets and if these loans are not coming back, if the loan is not coming back, if the interest is also not coming back, that means that is non-performing asset, the asset is not performing. So the, the gross NPA of less than 7% and the net NPAs of not more than 3% should be uh, with the UCBs uh, like if the gross NPA is less than 7% and the uh, net NPA should not be more than 3%. Net profit of at least 3 out of the preceding 4 years subject to it ha not having incurred a net loss in the immediate 
preceding year okay no default in the maintenance of the crr and the slr because they have to maintain the crr cash reserve ratio and the slr statutory liquidity ratio sound internal control system they should have they should have the cbs that is the core banking solution that connects all the branches of the bank as well as they should have the regulatory comfort because the rbi is looking after them so they should be maintaining the regulatory framework that uh, or and the rbi uh, should think that they are doing well okay so these are the fswm criteria so if the ucbs are following this fswm financially sound and well managed criteria then they will be allowed to expand their branches in the through the automatic route and what is the limit that they can expand up to 10% okay so permit them to open new branches up to 10% of the number of branches that they already have by the end of the previous financial year so if they have 10 branches 10% means they will be able to open one branch so now and the minimum is one branch you cannot open 0.5 branch no so the minimum will be one branch in respect of housing loans it has been decided to assign the risk weights on the basis of the loan to value okay the loan to value means loan how much loan you are giving you are giving the loan of 1000 rupees and what is the collateral that is given to you by the person so the collateral is given of 2000 or let's say 10000 so the loan to value ratio you have to see so loan to value ratio is very easy it is calculated by dividing the amount borrowed so this is borrowed by the appraised value of the property that is given to the bank as collateral you can say expressed as a percentage or this is see the housing loan is there so the person is getting the loan the person is getting the loan for the housing okay this is the loan for the housing that the person is getting so the how the house is being purchased so the house is of 2 lakhs let's say so you are taking the uh, loan of 1 lakh so the loan to housing this is the loan that is taken for the housing and the loan to value ratio is what loan to value ratio is loan upon value okay which would result in capital savings okay this will be applicable to all tiers of ucb so why this is done because the lower the ltv the lower the ltv is the lower the ltv is the better the loan is because the amount is saved by the collateral if the person is not giving this 1000 rupees so of course this 10000 rupees of the property will be of the so if the loan is of 1000 rupees and the property is of 10000 rupees the ltv ratio will be 1000 upon 10000 so that will be a percentage and the lower the ltv is the better will be the capital okay the better will be the asset that the uh, bank is giving as the loan so that's why the ltv ratio is considered for the risk weights that you have to see okay the lower the ltv the better will be the loan so these are the questions now that you have to answer and i hope that you will be able to answer these questions very easily just direct questions are there and you have to remember that what are the new revised frameworks that has been brought by the rbi okay so this was the only person ritika upadhyay that was able to answer the previous session question the first answer was special vastar account that the new accounts will be called as special vastar account as well as all of the above was the answer for the second question that the surplus amount will be used for what so surplus amount can be used for different purposes and so the answer was all of the above so thank you very much if you have any query you can mail us here or you can contact us through this number thank you